activity. Take two evaporating dishes. Take seven grams of iron filings in one dish and four grams of sulfur in the other dish. Now, bring a horseshoe magnet near the iron filings first and then near the sulfur powder. What do you observe? The iron filings cling to the magnet, but the sulfur powder does not get attracted to the magnet. Now transfer the entire iron filings into the dish containing sulfur powder. Stir the contents using a glass rod. Observe the color of the contents in the dish. It is yellowish gray in color. Once again, bring the magnet near the contents of the dish. What do you observe? The iron filings cling to the magnet. Now heat the dish for some time. Do you find any change in color? Yes. The contents on heating form a black substance. Now bring the horseshoe magnet near this black substance. What do you observe? There is no effect on the magnet. Let us draw conclusions of this activity. We saw that when the magnet was brought near the matter obtained by mixing iron filings and sulfur powder, the iron filings cling to the magnet. The black particles seen were the particles of iron and the yellow particles seen were the particles of sulfur. The property of iron particles to get attracted towards the magnet remained unchanged. This means that the components iron and sulfur were in the free state in that matter. This shows that the resulting matter was a mixture of iron and sulfur and the free state in that matter. This shows that the resulting matter was a mixture of iron and sulfur and possessed the properties of both the components. When iron filings and sulfur were heated together and cooled, there was no effect on the magnet and the characteristic yellow color of sulfur powder also disappeared. This shows that the matter obtained <laughs> after heating the components is different from the original components. When iron and sulfur was heated, an atom of iron chemically combined with an atom of sulfur to form molecules of a new compound, iron sulfide. <laughs>